Present. Peggy Durant. Abby Gold. Present. Jane Fan. Present. Sebastian McDougall. Present. Gia Raffier. Present. Lindsay Shawnick. Present. Hey. Uh, recognitions, presentations, introductions. Uh, so first I'd like to thank our outgoing board members, uh, Sharon Ferris and Billy Joel Zielinski. Uh, thanks for your service over the past few years and, and uh, we wish you best. Then I'd like to recognize our new members, Abby Gold from Ward 3, Sebastian McDougall, Ward 4, and Lindsay Shonak from Ward 2. Um, then we'll approve the, the previous meeting minutes. Uh, so I hope everyone had an opportunity to review uh, previous minutes. Uh, I'd like to entertain the motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. Second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, all approve, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Up next we have citizens addressing the board. Seeing no citizens, we'll move on to the next item, which is to elect an advisory, uh, park advisory board chairperson. Um, we, <clears throat> if we could back up one, that'd be great to, because we do have an amendment, agenda amendment number oh, five. Oh, apologies. Yep. yep, that's okay. Uh, any amendments to the agenda? Um, we do have one we're going to add um, approval um, and to look at a site plan and drawings for the Village Green Golf Course uh, bathroom that we're looking to put out there. So we want to review that. Um, we handed materials out, but where would you like to have that discussed? Uh, maybe after the uh, golf course food and beverage providers, so maybe okay. between items 10 and 11. Okay. Thank you. Do we need to vote on that to add that to yes, the? Yes, we do. Okay. So I'd right. entertain a motion to add approval of the site plan for Village Green uh, drawings to the agenda. I'll make the motion. Lindsay shown it. I'll second. We moved and seconded. Any discussion? None. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion approved. <clears throat> now we'll move on, uh, move on to elect a park advisory board chairperson. So we'll take any nominations. I'd like to nominate you, Mr. James Hand. I accept the nomination. <laughs> any other nominations? Okay, uh, seeing none, that we'd have to vote on it, correct, Holly? Mm -hmm. So I'd yeah. entertain a motion to elect myself, James Hand, <laughs> as the um, board chairperson. I'll make the motion to uh, have you serve as our park board chair, James Hand. I second that motion. Seconded, any discussion? I think you got it. <laughs> all right, we'll move on to the vote then. Uh, I'll approve, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> okay. Next we have a presentation by Kim on the volunteer program. Hi. Um, I guess as far as the volunteer program, um, we've really been trying to grow this program over the years and we kind of did an evaluation of how many volunteers we actually had in 2018 and I think you did see it in your packet, um, over 725 volunteers have been volunteering in our program. If it's like a youth baseball coach, a flag football coaches, adaptive recreation. Uh, we do also have a city beautification program where we have a lot of volunteers help with that. Um, with that city beautification, we have adopt the flower bed, we have adopt the street. Uh, one of the new things we added is adopt the pond. And there's over 30 ponds in the city of Moorhead that um, 
litter does kind of collect in those areas and it's nice to keep that looking good too. Uh, we also have adopt the park and then we also do adopt the river and we coordinate that with river keepers. And when the city beautification program came along, um, we work with Mike, with park maintenance, river keepers, uh, city planners, and we also um, work with just the area volunteers and organizations in our community to try to make this happen. Um, the volunteers usually contact uh, me and then from there we kind of find out the best fit for them. Um, another area where volunteers are used is at the um, Senior Connections, um, which is um, at the Yemcomp Center. We have Yemcomp Center greeters. Uh, we have volunteers that help with our Little Linkers um, golf program because um, those kids are pretty little and they need a little more one-on-one -on -one attention um, and then we also have um, uh, adaptive baseball coaches too um, when we do our coaching we always um, do like a background check for those parents that are part of that program and Jordan pretty much coordinates um, all the uh, volunteers for our sports programs and then I do more of the city beautification and then the MCOMS does theirs um, another area too is special events we always ask for different uh, volunteers to help us at our special events so that the events look more organized and we have more helpers uh, we had about 150 volunteers that did um, volunteer at our various larger special event functions that we did throughout the year um, if you were to kind of put the total hours we had about 7800 hours that were um, uh, where volunteers had checked in and were part of the program and if you were to give that a dollar value and we kind of went low we did ten dollars per hour um, that came out to over seventy eight thousand dollars of value by having the volunteers as part of our program and um, I think that's pretty impressive and pretty pretty good for the community um, we do work with a lot of service clubs uh, we work with the schools we work with the colleges um, as far as um, trying to recruit volunteers um, and we do try to reward our volunteers the ones that adopt a flower bed downtown we have about 25 sites in downtown Moorhead where people plant flowers which they use their own money which is kind of um, nice too and they also um, they they do about um, those 30 beds um, are from organizations individuals and um, it's kind of a good a good program that we have going and Mike does help us identify those different uh, locations they are all adopted at this time um, if you want to learn more about volunteer opportunities you go to um, cityofmoorhead.com or moreheadparks.rec or moreheadparks.com and go under the volunteer section and it'll talk about all the different volunteer opportunities um, anything in orange is available and if it's in black it means that it's been adopted and it says who is currently adopting that um, section or that doing that project that we have um, I don't know, do you guys have any questions about the volunteer program? How, uh, in general, how is participation? Do you feel like you could use double the volunteers that you've had so far? Do you feel like you've had a good number of volunteers? I assume you could always use more. I assume you don't have too many. Yeah, well, Adopt the Street is probably one area where we do have probably the most openings. Um, but we do have a lot of one-time service groups. And usually I check with Mike um, as far as where the need is. Like Highway 10, it just seems like that's an area where the litter, when the wind blows the right way, we get a lot of litter in that area. So if a service organization or a college wants to do a project, I usually find out what our priority is and then from there assign them to that uh, location. Uh, 20th Street's another area, 34th Avenue. Um, a lot of our larger parks um, that are more our regional parks like Gooseberry, MB Johnson, I do send out a lot of one-time service groups um, to 
pick up litter and um, take care of those areas too. Um, as far as adopting, adopt the river uh, or adopt the red, I do have two locations out of the 10 different locations um, that are left to adopt, but otherwise they're all adopted. All the flower beds are currently adopted and we have, um, I think, about three people on the waiting list that would like to adopt something um, and those flower beds too. So we do kind of have a waiting list on that. Um, adopt the park. I'd say there's still about 20 parks in the city that could be adopted, but the larger parks um, have groups that are working on those like continually too. So, um, but we can always take more volunteers. Yeah. Can you share, and this is my first meeting, full disclosure, um, how do we currently communicate uh, the volunteer opportunities outside of the website? Do we communicate in the catalog or yep we have it in our parks and rec brochure that goes out twice a year um, it is on our city website and usually in the spring of the year we do kind of a little kickoff or a story like in the make um, in the FM extra um, in the form uh, we do stuff on Facebook um, to try to get the word out too um, that we still have areas to adopt uh, and then we also just send out emails to colleges where our needs are at and see if they'll come forward to help out. Um, and churches too, and you know, just general emails. Probably one of the easiest ways that we can help is just sharing mm -hmm. your Facebook yeah. posts and getting yeah. that to our friends. And yeah, we do a lot with the Moorhead Key Club. They help with a lot of our special events and they do get service hours for doing that. Um, they have to do that as part of that organization too. Kim, maybe you want to talk about a little bit more about the recognition. Um, you know, we there's no funding anywhere in the budget for the city for anything for volunteers necessarily. Um, other avenues of service are what you're doing now, serving on boards and commissions. Mm -hmm. So there, it's broader than a uh, few things that Kim has mentioned. That this is what we do in the park department, um, but there is volunteerism. Uh, throughout the city just serving on these boards and and commissions um, the other thing I wanted to mention also um, that's in the materials is that we do have volunteer insurance so as we send folks out we, we, sometimes we have to gauge like we, right now at Snaky Creek up at MB Johnson Park sharp terrain you know we're trying to decide how to get the litter picked out of that creek and you know we have to be mindful to not put volunteers in harmful situations but as far as the um, recruitment or excuse me the recognition um, why don't you cover that for us we do recognize our volunteers on our city website and I think that's a good way for people to see who's all volunteering right now and that you know we really are trying to grow the program um, the other thing that we do is like our youth baseball coaches um, that do a lot of our summer events um, Jordan usually hosts um, like a thank you party um, and they do inflatable games and he maybe does a little grilling or they get uh, a sponsor to maybe donate some food and it's a way to thank our coaches for being a part of that um, senior connections yeah but um the museum you know over uh, the senior center for the city of moorhead is in the yumcom center and so the greeters at the yumcom center are our volunteers and the ones who help with senior meals and so forth and twice a year we do a volunteer appreciation with them and so there's different varieties it depends where you volunteer and how you volunteer and um kind of what your recognition is and our city beautification, as far as our flower beds downtown, we do have a sign that recognizes each one of the volunteers in the organizations that are part of that too. And some it might just be a friend of downtown is even one person because they didn't, they want to do it, but they, you know, but that still is kind of um, nice to get the people and get their names out there a little bit more too. Um, and then like our city website and, you know, just, um, sending out thank yous after special events, you know, different things like that, or sending out an email just thanking people and getting their input is, you know, another way that we, you know, try to thank our volunteers. Okay. Other questions? <clears throat> 
Well, I think you. it's always good once a year to go over just because not only do we have a lot of new faces, but this is the time of the year when we're recruiting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when people um, visit with us, uh, there's a lot of companies that release their workers to come and do litter pickup. Some of our new building and construction areas get really bad. And um, so it really, Steve uh, Moore with Public Works and their department really highlights some real problem areas sure. at times. And sometimes we call the construction company and ask them to come help us with litter pickup. Because, oh, you know, it's about stuff flying all over the city. So, um, so well, your Facebook page, what is the name of that account? Uh, our Facebook page? Um, Moorhead Park and Rec. Moorhead Park and Rec, okay. Figured, but I just forgot to ask. Yes. <laughs> Liking that gives you highlights on, Randy manages a lot of the posts on that Facebook. Um, that manages a lot of information for us. Our whole budget for our advertising is 14000 for the year, and that's every, uh, we have to do golf course ads and one enchanted evening and all the different ads of uh, festivals and different things that we do. And so um, an example is, is that's about the whole budget for Frostable. So we don't have a lot, so we have to depend on the social media. Uh, Randy does a great job of posting different things, but if you like that and then share, that really helps us keep um, getting the word out because that brochure goes out twice a year. And um, hopefully people get it, but you know, uh, it tends to get lost after a while and then um, you don't remember, but that'll be a reminder. Um, Randy, maybe you want to cover on just for example one enchanted evening how many posts did or you know What what is the typical that we do? Uh, we do post the event to Facebook and then uh, from there we will Send it out again reminding like for instance when tickets were on sale um, And then we send out one more reminder. It's just kind of a last push about ticket sales just in case and So it's it's getting enough. I mean, I think yeah, we don't want to go overboard. We don't want people to say oh, you're posting too much and then unlike our page so we just kind of try to follow at least two to three times a week and then it's on the calendar also correct the city calendar and so if you like the city of Moorhead that uh, as a calendar thing comes up that also you will get a second push so saw some traction for that one on the uh Moorhead equals fantastic page too <laughs> okay yeah has a decent amount of Moorhead yeah yeah, we didn't. Uh, unfortunately, you know, Kim does our special events too. Unfortunately, that one, um, years ago, we would have like 350 people or, you know, a, a fair number, 250. I shouldn't speak to the numbers, but now we're down to where, um, you know, the deadline, we had reached the deadline and we only had 20 families and a total of 50. Um, you know, it, it it might have run its course for us, I guess. I don't know. You know, we've got some other ideas for different special events that may be more broad-based that we may have to look at, but that's what we do all the time as we look at and evaluate our programs and see where it's at. And um, there are certainly folks that like that, and then they tried to get a push to at least yeah, we said we needed to have 100, and we do that with all of our programs. Like, uh, there's a minimum for the cost. Um, Kim, maybe you want to talk about that even a little bit, um, that event maybe, the, and then other special events too. Yeah, I think, um, like Holly said, there was, I think, about 22 families that would have been involved with the One Enchanted Evening Dance, and that was about 75 people. But when you run these events, you have just all those costs as far as um, the flowers, the DJ, the um use of that space, and then we also do the advertising, which we advertised in KidSource, and we advertise in the FM Extra. We do our news releases, we do Facebook, all those things to try to get the word out there. Um, an event like that would cost about $1,800, but if you only have 75 people signed up, you're gonna have to take that hit. And if you take that hit of seven $800, then um, you're going to have to cut back at River Arts or at Greater Moorhead Days or things like that. So that's kind of how it's sort of set up. Um, we did have some families put a push at it um, at the event um, after the 14th, and we had 116 that did register. 
and that did affect about 39 families. So the attendance did go up, but you still took a loss of about four or five hundred dollars. Um, but um, people that came had a good time. I think it's good that we just evaluate it though and see if it is an event to do or do we want to do maybe the indoor farmers market and do something different in February and put our resources to that. Um, you know, there's different things that you could do to kind of decide what is the best for the city. So. And Folkways recently came and um, used the Yumcomst as a trial also for that indoor farmers market. And we had about 3,500 people. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, you know, that partnership gives us uh, different advertising, and it's a great use of the space for the Yumcomst to, to um, you know, and they're talking about looking at the Center Mall as a second location. And, you know, that's, that's an event that, um, a citywide special event that certainly affects a, a large number of people and brings people into our city. You know, a lot of the food vendors for that event were Moorhead um, restaurants, gave them a chance to show JJ's barbecue and um, the Tiki House and a, a lot of different things happening that highlighted Moorhead. So when we look at how we expend our, our very limited resources, you know, we're, that's something that we're talking about, um, um, maybe doing a switch to an event such as that. So it just you know that's why at the end of each park board uh, packet there's program brochures and it tells you how many people came kind of what the cost the profit loss some of those things i think uh, every program we have we evaluate um, to look and see what's the best use of city resources so kim what else is happening for special events maybe you want to just do that's one of our fyis but just maybe um do a rundown some of the things coming up yeah okay um, well we basically we have the Celtic festival coming up and that's going to be on March 9th at the MCOM Center and I do uh, partner with um, Fargo Parks with that event and then we do get a grant from the uh, we do one with the arts partnership and we do try to bring in some um, sponsorship for that. Um, that event draws about 2,300 people is what we've had in the past. So we definitely use every space of the Yumcomb yeah. Center for that <laughs> event. And, um, but it, people just really enjoy it and there's people that come year after year. Uh, the Moorhead Ice Show is coming up um, in March also. And um, there we will be working, if anybody comes, we have Just for Kicks at the high school that day and the ice show on our side. So that'll be kind of a challenging day, but we have some plans in place to get people to the right spot. Um, then our summer uh, events that are coming up would be the uh, River Arts, and that we're gonna be offering it four times at Memorial Park, and we have different bands that come to that, and we, I. As part of the uh, river arts, we're going to try one of our river art nights at Woodlawn Park and where the amphitheater, uh, Heritage Garden and Amphitheater is and just kind of see how that goes with that location. Uh, we'll do a lot of the same activities, but just try a different park and just see maybe you'll get a different group of people. Um, and one of the things when that Heritage Garden was built was to try to do some have musicians and music and that amphitheater creates that space. Um, we'll either bring our stage down or they'll play on the burrum that's down there. Um, let's see, we have Summer Splash, which is a popular activity once our pools get open. <laughs> it's hard see, to think <laughs> now about that. <laughs> uh, we also work with the Plains Art Museum and they do the programming at the Heritage Garden also. They're looking at bringing three movies, uh, doing three movie nights um, in the park um, this summer, and they um, were also gonna do kind of a plant exchange in May and kind of some gardening education um, down at the amphitheater, or in that amphitheater space too. Uh, we will be working with Streets Alive. I haven't heard the route on that, but they are gonna, be on the Moorhead side and the Fargo side. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't, they just met this week as far as their route and what they're thinking about doing with that. Um, but they have a lot of activities and they close off the streets and things like that for that event. Um, 
and then that kind of takes us yeah. to our next meeting but yeah. one that um was just got added that um you know we we add but rarely do we take away and that's why like some of this we need to talk about but the um saint pat's parade um we talked about that kind of before we went live and that's going to be in moorhead and in fargo this year starting on center avenue um and it is i believe the 16th of march um yeah, so the Saturday before, so. Um, oh, yeah, that. Yeah. We're gonna have snow. Yeah, yeah, I'm guessing we will, but we've had snow before. But it gets it it, it um yeah it goes quicker. <laughs> but um, it's that's just above zero. Yeah, I know. Do you know we opened our golf courses not too many years ago on March 11th. Unreal. Isn't that the earliest, Mike? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah March 11th. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be there. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, it, it, you know, each time we have a meeting, which we have our meetings listed at quarterly for you folks, but um, that doesn't mean that that's all the time commitment, just so you know. We're going to be looking at um, a few different avenues, including kind of doing a tour. So if I could jump in on that at this point, I know we're a uh, little bit off agenda, but um, we're looking at the north side. Um, I might get Moorhead Baseball an opportunity to visit with you guys out at Centennial um, uh, Athletic Complex um, and just kind of to go out there, uh, maybe start at the um comps, we'll get a bus, and then we'll do a tour out into that area and show you a couple projects that we're thinking of doing some renovations on. We'll um, set a time for that. We might do a doodle poll or just use a June or July meeting date similar to the Tuesday, you know, the fourth Tuesday like we do now, but really to go out and look at um, what some, some opportunities there um, of what's on our fundraising to show you kind of what we're thinking that we need to spiff up or some improvements, you know, um, and then maybe later we'll do some south side a south side tour, but starting on that north side at that um, baseball complexes and some folks didn't even know that we had a park office in the sports center. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we might stop there. <laughs> so anything else for Kim before we let her go? I was going to mention too, since we have all this snow, cross country skiing, we're going to extend it two more weekends because people have really uh, been coming out. We just had a group with North Country Trails and over 100 people came out to ski this last Saturday. And it was a beautiful day, Saturday, but then not so nice Sunday. But um, <laughs> that was a very successful event. Cool. What the park other was that in? What's that? What park was the skiing? Uh, MB Johnson. We have cross-country ski trails behind the Yumcomst at Viking Ship mm -hmm. and at MB Johnson. Those are the two trails that we keep groomed. Um, the other thing that we've extended, um, because uh, skaters like it, is we've um, the warming houses. If you like us on Facebook, you might have seen that um, five we kept open and two we closed. I think is the right count. Um, staff, the warming houses were scheduled to close on the 27th of February, as was cross-country skiing, and as was a lot of our winter activities. Usually by February, the sun is so warm, um, the rinks are not in good shape. But this year, they're still in good shape, and so we're staffing them until the 9th of March. Um, we'll be keeping five at least open. We start to lose people who join spring sports, cross-country runners, and so we can't staff all of them because they've started their spring sports roundup but um it isn't it isn't cheap it um i think for the week i think it was five thousand dollars um so as you can see money it, it isn't cheap to keep them all open we open and for spring break which typically we've never been open that long but we'll be open one to eight um, so that when kids are off school coming up, um, the warming houses will be open um, on those days off. So we just thought it important. We'll try and make it up in a different part of our budget, but to offer that opportunity to sit as, to the kids to keep them, so parents can get them outside some. <laughs> yeah, very mixed feelings about the yeah that we're able to keep those open. Yeah, yeah. Spring, yeah. We wish too that we were heading into a different season, but. And lastly, I guess I want to thank Kim Wangler. Um, she worked with us for a number of years, years ago, and then she took a job in West Fargo when her kids went to school there. 
um, closer to the schools and she worked there for a few years and then came back to us three years five years I don't even know four years four years ago she came back to us and to finish her career and she's put in her resignation um, to retire with her husband and go do fun things <laughs> uh, too young to retire I tell her but <laughs> But I want to personally thank her, and um, she's done a great job. Uh, the Mord Business Association, a lot of people are like, oh, no. So uh, people know Kim. They know her work and know it to be very community-oriented, lots of sponsorships. And so we're currently taking applications for the, to fill her position. You'll be done the end of April. April 30th. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So... I think we're going to get some good applications. It'll be just fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, we thank you for your work. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is to approve the Southside Dog Park location study. Holly, would you mind give us an update on that? Um, in, with, your, with your packet, um, we showed you four locations and we actually looked at a few others. We were looking basically the number one item for all of what people request. And you may hear it as you become that spokesperson for your area is people want a dog park on the south side of Moorhead. And um, uh, Shelly Carlson was just telling me who joined us, council member, she's like, oh my, people are calling me about a south side dog park. So um, what years ago, a few years, or like in, not a few years, but in, August, um, we signed agreements with the Fargo Moorhead Foundation for to do some fundraising. Um, Moorhead doesn't have a lot of financial resources at this point to put into just building some of these things. So we really look for private public partnerships. And um, starting this foundation, um, we're hoping can lead us into maybe doing some fundraising with dog lovers um, for and different things that are on the list. Um, there is a long list on the foundation, and we'll get to that on the next agenda item. But we really want to move the Southside Dog Park forward. Um, when the foundation opened, within hours, um, there was a canine that was funded through the uh, Mord Police. There is a lot of dog lovers out there and a lot of people who we think will be interested in helping us do this. With that, we have to be ready when we raise the money, and we don't know how much money we really even need yet um, because we've not done that work. So um, we got a group of staff people together to identify locations uh, that met criteria. And the national criteria is in there as far as what's the best size, you know, mature trees, um, turf that's already established um, are all good things, a parking lot, water. All of these things cost a lot of money. So if you have a location that has them in already, you're already well ahead of the game. Um, the fencing is expensive. Expensive. So uh, we looked at a lot of different locations, all the way from Stone Mill, close to Azul, where there's a lot of apartments. Um, there was a lot of people who talked about downtown, but really the people on the south side of town are the ones that really would like to, are, is the ones we're hearing from. Doesn't mean we can't come back into the center of town and do something along the river at a different time, but um, I have to tell you, when we looked at it, I thought we would pick four locations and kind of throw it out there to the public, and it became really clear that land that was vacated um, with homes out at River Oaks Point has a lot of the amenities already. Um, it has much, it has a tree buffer along the road. It has a bike path going right into it, and a walking path. Um, if you look at your diagrams, you'll see that River Oaks Point is along the river up on the north side. It is not over by the water, but there's a parking lot there. Needs to have some work done to it, so there is cost associated. But there was stubbed in water at that location because there used to be a homes in that area. So we could easily connect up for water fountains for dogs and so forth. And it just became really apparent uh, to us anyway, but we're open to suggestions that that would be a location that we could get the most done the quickest. Um, it doesn't have the visibility. You know, you have to kind of know where you're going. Um, doesn't have that visibility that the rest would have, like on Highway 75. Um, but it has so many of the other things that we really think this is something we could get done 
um, rather quickly. Um, there's a lot of, we looked at Southside Regional Park, which is where the soccer complex is across from Davies. That needs to be remaster planned and a lot of neighborhood meetings in there. Um, um, I think for some of you who are new, but um, that neighborhood has um, filled in since the master plan was done. And there's a lot of new homes. So putting a dog park isn't something that um, is for the, you know, it has to have that buffer for noise and for, uh, it has to have parking, which that has. Um, but we really feel like um, a swift decision. And just because you have one doesn't mean you can't add more later. Um, as there are no natural buffers, yep. There isn't, there are no natural buffers there. You're absolutely right. And that's why we would, are proposing that um, you would allow us to do further study instead of using resources to study many different areas, but to really um, do some neighborhood communication and to really um, look to study River Oaks Point as a location to move forward on. Um, I think if you had a chance to review the study, that location was pretty clearly the, the best fit with the least obstacles to overcome. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also really appreciate that we have an opportunity to sort of talk to the neighborhood and, yeah. and get their feedback before really moving forward. So I think the focus on the one area makes a lot of sense at this point. So I. I Kudos to, to you and your team for the work done. Yeah, so yeah, the north side park, you know, it's out out in the open. Mm -hmm. You got the wind. This area is just secluded. You got the trees buffered. It's going to be, I think, it's going to be a really nice spot. Puts it to good use too. It's it's like you said, it's been sitting there empty for how long? Yeah. The other thing is, is that um, the more activity you get in some of these areas, which this is a peninsula, uh, the the more likelihood we don't have problems in that area with you know folks coming out for you know not so good reasons yep. Yep. so i mean if we have a dog park out there now we just have to kind of talk to that neighborhood around there and um you know which we see a lot of dogs already going there from that neighborhood so they might like it i mean they may Structured be yeah i mean we don't anticipate problems um we actually anticipate maybe getting a, um, some buy-in from those folks that live around there so we'd like to hear from you guys and see what you think or and would there be fencing along right along the right along the natural barrier? Yeah. 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 It would blend in a little bit. You wouldn't necessarily I mean right. it, it wouldn't be a big rectangle in the middle of Right. The, the other thing is is there'd be a fence off of the bike path to get mowers in and um, you know, there'd be a fence where the neighborhood could walk in. You wouldn't, and then um, as you can see, we just did some brief drawings, but uh, you know, we don't want to visit with fence people until we're going to try and make it the biggest we can. Um, there's one home um, which is on the south side, so we want to stay, keep a 100 foot barrier from that. And so you're thinking of putting it more back towards where that little cul de sac area is back there where it loops around, or more up where the houses used to be with all the trees? More up where the houses used up front, to be. Right off of River Shore, then? Yep. Okay. Yep in the front part of the park which is the flatter grass and more open we we believe that not only is the cost of the fencing but there are some costs for more public service to kind of get the water back in there and so forth but we think the amenities we put some fun pictures in there we think people we're gonna hopefully we've got a whole list of plans to do some community engagement um so yeah, it's showing that it's jumps and so forth. But, you know, I think those kinds of things might be something that some uh, dog lovers will, I mean, we don't want to just, our north side one is really boring. Let's just go with boring. It's, it's just a fence. Yeah. yeah, it's just a fence. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it does. But we would like this one to really be something special. And, um, and this is one of our, for this, um, Council, they've selected um, six uh, target areas, and this is one of those target areas to work on. They agreed, and it was on our number one priority for the park board for years in our capital planning to do this. Um, and we feel like if we could get this one done, um, fundraise for it, and then the city has set aside some modest resources to match some money for this one for 2019. So. 
Well, is it so you'd like a motion made to um, designate um, some resources or time to conducting a study to more fully understand the site? Yeah. So that you know, actually, the motion would be to. Um, just really put this down as the as the site, okay. but yet leaving it open for public to respond to it. Okay, to put the resources motion. to to um, study the site and uh, review with the neighborhood. So I would make the motion to make River Oaks Point the site for our future south side dog park. <laughs> if I could add, study the site, yeah. just because to I don't want to get ahead of study the study the site yeah. to study. Yeah. So make a motion to study the site at River Oaks Point for a future Moorhead Dog Park. Wonderful. I'll second that. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Just curious what the timeline or time frame is for something like this. How long we would envision a study taking and then I would imagine we would do some sort of fundraising through right. the FMRA Foundation. Yep, it's one of the items. Um, this, I would think that we could put together with by spring. Cool. I mean, I'm thinking we just need to get our crew going. Actually, it might be something that one of you want to help, you know, serve on, get some ideas on the marketing plan or whatever. But it does take some fundraising. So as far as construction, it would depend on how quickly that fundraising came. In the PowerPoint, we note a couple of ideas that we have for community engagement you know, do a gathering of dogs and the money from our dog swim going towards that and really making a push in a lot of different areas. Um, this won't be a big ask because of the location. So I think we get there quicker with this location. What's the anticipated cost of building a dog park? Any ideas? Yeah, and how many of these amenities? Yeah. You know, I have to tell you, I think we're, we're hoping that we're in the 150 range. Okay. And part of what we're approving here is to get that get number that to study and, and focus yeah. on this site and yeah. get an estimate of what. Yeah. yeah. When we looked at the other sites, we're like, well, do we measure? You know, do we bring out the fence companies and get linear feet? And it just seemed like a lot of um, back and forth, and it just wasn't adding up. So we wanted to come to you. I think it'll go. We'll we'll be back um, <laughs> to show you kind of what what we came up with. Do we have any anticipation of what the community members will, how they'll respond? No. Okay. That's why we want to get don't there want to say this is the final location. We want to say that we're going to go out and do our community outreach. Study it. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item is to appoint the Moorhead Community Fund representative. And Holly, if you want to give us a refresher on the... Well, in, in your packet, there's a list of duties. And with this foundation, there's a whole bunch of project and projects. And on our parks website, if I could ask all of the new members to really dig deep into that parks website and to see that the foundation, the F, uh, it's called the Moorhead Community Fund. And with that, um, in December, a policy was passed to um, Identif not only identify projects, but also have a advisory group. And with that advisory group, we need to have somebody from our park board or a designee. If nobody on the park board wants to serve on the foundation committee, then it would be a designee um, that the chair would pick um, to serve on it. And it would not only be, the council also helps pick projects, but it's to advise the council if another project should be added. It's to look at our marketing materials. We have a miracle book started or a wish book um, kind of with all of our projects including arts and culture it's a citywide the Morehead Community Fund is a citywide foundation um, and so it has um, youth scholarships for parks program it has banners it has tire fix it things it has the plaza at the center mall um, you know whatever we fundraise for um, but this advisory group we need to elect somebody from park board to serve on that uh, advisory committee and it's advisory to the council but I want to be honest it can, can involve also going um, to um, do the ask 
you know, we put a project together, like the dog park. You know, is there somebody who wants to fund the whole dog park and do a park naming? And that's why it's taken a while to get going, because also you could name the dog park and one person could fund the whole thing and name it after somebody you know who's a dog lover, and then we'd have it. Um, we just have to get the word out there, and it's how do we do that. Um, so whoever you, um, you know, it's philanthropy, basically. So up to you guys, or to, I guess now James, to appoint somebody, and if anybody's interested, or maybe James is interested, I don't know. Which I, uh, yeah, I, I would certainly be more than willing to, to serve. Uh, but if there's anyone else interested, I do want to open it up and, and uh, you know, if, if anyone wants to have a discussion on that, more than happy to. But, uh, okay. <laughs> I hear an appointment. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I will appoint myself. <laughs> okay. All right. So a question or <clears throat> are there so I see the membership is made up of the different commissions and in, in Moorhead. Is it fully um it is not yet. Okay. Uh, one more mayoral appointment and then there is a downtown inc appointment that I have not heard from. Um, kind of the hang up on getting going. We really hope that this we can wrap this up by the um, mid early March so that we can mostly it's the Matson we got a you know um, Matson field project is ready and um, scholarships we just need to get moving it's time so we hope to have a meeting in early March is what I'm struggling to say I guess <laughs> which I'm very excited to see what that group of people, what we can accomplish, and yeah, should be okay. Hopefully, by next meeting, we'll have something exciting to report. Yeah. Do you know who the MBA? Uh, Sherry Larson. Yeah, Sherry Larson is on the MBA board. She helped a lot us a lot with Frostable, and I know that Steve Gertz is the council rep, I believe. Um, and now we have our rep, and Carrie Winterstein is the arts and culture rep. Um, and then the rest of them are open still. But the minute we get that, we're going to go through materials and get start getting a lot more stuff out on the foundation. If you go to our foundation page now, we don't have real fun pictures and really redoing the website. And we just want somebody else to approve the material, the, our marketing materials we've been working on. Great. Any other questions or comments on uh, on that item? Okay, move on to item 10, golf course uh, food and beverage provider. Uh, Bachman Catering has been selected. Holly, would you like yep. to? Yep. This is just an FYI. Um, Anthony is here. Yep, I thought I saw movement back there. Um, uh, we have a new um, food and beverage provider, and it's Anthony Bachman with Bachman Catering. So I'd like to, um, it's more of a meet and greet to welcome him. Um, last year, we had a lot of folks that would like to have a different choice, and so this year we chose Anthony with a, a select group. Um, I wanted um, to make it more, to kind of do things a little different and maybe have Anthony explain to you, if you could hit that button right there, um, what might be different about what he's going to provide as the food and beverage provider at golf than what would be what we had in the past? Well, I'm, to be honest, not too familiar with, with the past, uh, what, what's all been offered. But uh, what we kind of plan on doing this year is just kind of Keeping it simple, we're going to offer a lot of uh, grab-and-go things that are easy to eat and quick to eat and grab. Uh, we will also be having uh, hot food, like off the grill, burgers and fries and sandwiches. Um, at the Meadows, we're going to concentrate on the banquet room in the basement. Um, try to utilize that as much as possible because if it's not, if it's empty it's not making any money for myself or the city um, so we're just going to try to fill that up with graduation parties uh, uh, business meetings and and golf tournaments and functions like that 
Um, Anthony, maybe you would learn to tell them what your current businesses are. Okay. Um, I am the owner-operator of the VIP restaurant and catering in downtown Fargo, and I also have a food cart called Fargo Phillies. We do Philly cheesesteak sandwiches uh, uh, downtown, different events, the farmer's market, and I travel around doing fairs and festivals. Um, so doing food in large scales is very common for me. So. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why we feel that we'll be a good fit to take over and, and manage the food and beverage at the golf courses. Excellent. Hopefully we're able to open the golf course. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> right. yeah. Well, I, I hope to see the food cart out. I think that would be a really cool, different sort of uh, approach to, to doing that. So will you be sort of marketing and looking for those events to f use the banquet area? Is that kind of your... Yes, we have, uh, I currently employ uh, a um, a catering manager slash salesperson to book my catering and and fill our our banquet spaces at the VIP. So she's just going to um, utilize an extra space to give us, you know, awesome. more business. So tying into a larger um, organization, we had six groups that put in uh, requests for proposals, um, but really felt like um, he's set up to cater, he's got a bigger kitchen somewhere else. These are very small spaces. It's more like running concession stand at Village Green. It's a tough place to, um, to um, do big banquet cooking, but they can hold a hundred. So I mean, you can make the food and bring it in and so forth. So we really excited to start a new venture with Anthony and and Sarah. Um, his wife is, um, but they're Moorhead residents. And uh, how many children do you have? Four daughters. Four daughters. So <laughs> <laughs> so we welcome you to our group. Thank you. And thank you for coming. To at least this group gets to know who you are. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for coming today. You guys have any questions? Summer. Okay. Thank you, Anthony. Thank Sorry you. if we kept you waiting. No problem. <laughs> okay, and now we, let's see, we'll go to the added item, approve the site plan for Village Green. <clears throat> One of the things, that I'll let Mike cover this one in just a second. One of the things of the Village Green restroom project is that's a project that uses course improvement funds. Over the years, golfers put in a little extra money on each round of golf um, so that they will help be uh, part of the improvements and um, additional restrooms that are not porta potties are um, one of the requests that they have long had for long and wide. We'll be getting this out to the golfers by way of social media, this plan also um, for input. But this is a location that was chosen a long time ago. It's where we have porta potties now. Uh, correct, Mike? We yes, yeah, this is the original nine holes that was built back, I think, in 79. So now, but now it's the back nine. So right now there is a portable bathroom on hole number 12 and it's been there for many years and this location is behind 13 green, 13th green, on your, there's a cart path that comes around through there on the way to 14th green so it's, it's, it's a really nice location. Yeah, we um, need to dig in uh, sewer and water but this particular location and this we're going to be doing a outreach to the neighbors in that area also just to let them know that um, this is the site location that we're looking at putting it um, you know, uh, as you can see from the design I wanted to mention there's an overhang what isn't on included on this design is that there's a water fountain an exterior water fountain on that wall but this design has a little bit of an overhang also that allows if we have a big tournament to put some coolers there um, you know to do some food and beverage right out of um, in the shaded area instead of setting up a tent that blows and so forth so that's what the overhang is about but this is just kind of of a site plan um, to move forward on a new bathroom, a permanent bathroom at Village Green. So we would look for approval um, to continue with this. Okay. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I just have a question. Oh, sorry, Heidi. Um, about the proximity to that house, um, to the, I don't know, the direction. 
seems very close to the house, this house. Oh, to the, uh, yeah. That house. I, to the west? Is it? Yeah, that's the west, yeah. North is up. Yeah. N would you, would you have to talk to those people just to let them know and? You know, we're talking about sending a letter out and letting them know um, in the past we have talked to them. Um, yes, the answer is yes. Um, you know, should everybody, you know, we would have to rethink and look at it again. Yeah. Which I have to imagine it's preferable than yeah. porta potties. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's also preferable than they report um, people not using the porta potty. Oh. If that yeah. holds one, sure. then there's four in a group. So. Yeah. <laughs> So they've had concerns about people using trees, so. This will be an improvement. <laughs> yeah. But um, you're right about location. I mean, everybody would probably rather not. Um, if you go to the meadows, there's one right by Kendall's there. That's close. Um, so, you know, having these kind of structures close is much preferred um, than and having And we also have one on the front nine, too. It'd be a similar design as, as this one. Yeah. And that shelter part is works really nice too, because in case of bad weather too, that's where everyone heads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I just have another. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just have another question. Of I really like. I actually really like the bathroom structure at um, the park where um, ugh, I don't know the names. Davy or like a memorial park by Ushers. That one. Yeah. That's a nice bathroom. That's a beautiful, yeah. actually a beautiful structure. <laughs> and you're doing the same thing that, there. That is all natural stone. Yes. That, that was built with TIF money, and it was a really expensive bathroom. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so probably not. Could have got two. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, you know, we always look at them. This is a more modest building. I think the total price on this, I think, is 180 is all the money we've so. saved. And this does not come out of um, general fund, it's out of that course improvement fee. So. You answered one of my questions. Okay. I was the total amount, but my second question is, um, are these locked at night? Yes. Yeah, we have, um, just so for some of you newer members, all of our bathrooms have to be locked or, um, um, we come back to sometimes not having the fixtures. Um, so I, people say, but, you know, the bathroom should be left open for the public to use, and it never works out well. It doesn't. No. No, as a matter of fact, that's been a problem, too, the bad behavior using those bathrooms. So, okay. Any other discussion? All right, uh, move on to a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Next we have some updates, and we'll go over some of them, maybe not all of them unless people have questions, but uh, we'll start with the uh, Greater Minnesota Regional Parks and Trails Grant, Holly. Unfortunately, we didn't get the legacy grant this year. Um, our plan, for those of you who are new, I put a map in front of you. Um, there's the trail segment map. We have been so fortunate to have a number of our larger legacy grants funded over the past years. This kind of gives you an idea of what's funded, what's completed, and where we're at. Um, you'll see down on, um, there's a Midtown Trail, it's, it, it's off from Concordia, that's called Midtown. Downtown Trail is completed, but Midtown is, is what the grant was for, and that's a vital piece of our infrastructure. It's kind of a redo there um, through Alm Park and um, all that. Um, flood really affected it, and we just feel like if we keep applying for that, that they're going to give it to us. We will continue to apply. For legacy money um, originally didn't need a match. Um, the more competitive it's gotten, I, I put a memo in, the more 
the the um, projects with a uh, 25% match or more are getting are the ones getting funded. And so it's just even though it's not a requirement, it has become kind of the rule of the road that if the local community's in, and we do save some money every year for projects along the river, 50000 a year in our capital budget, but that kind of takes care of dog bags and garbage. It isn't much. Um, so anyway, with the Midtown project, we're hoping to apply for transportation alternative money, which is federal money, federal federal, not railroad money, but federal transportation money to get cars off the road and onto alternate transportation, which would obviously bike paths. So we'll apply for that, and that could be considered part of our match. So um, the city doesn't have funds right now that would um, throw us into that 25% category, but maybe we could, if you would get a transportation alternative grant, it's usually five years away from ever, even getting to build it. So you'll hear these announcements, well, Moore had got a grant for a trail segment. Well, it's, it's like the bridge that connects, that was transportation alternative money, that connects Gooseberry, or no, excuse me, um, Memorial and Oak Grove. That one that was just put in was transportation alternative money. And so we'll continue to apply, but the two segments that we're applying for is that Midtown Trail by Alm Park and Concordia, and then Harvest Trail. And Harvest Trail is way south, and we asked them if we should split it up, and they said it was better to do them together, the grant writing people. Harvest Trail is <coughs> south of Blue Stem. So you can, that one is, we aren't even growing there yet, but sometimes these take years to get. And so um, we combine those grants. There may be a decision to split them later, depending on what the grant funders are saying. But that, um, and then the other ones, it tells what the funding source is and when the construction is. And that Blue Goose Trail, when it says federal and city funded, that's TAP money. So that um, dark, um, wine color that one is funded and um, it starts construction this year um, and some of it is on road some of it's off road as you can see going around Tessa Terrace um, that's an area we don't have easements to get into so that one is that's on road but it's a bike path kind of um, off the road there so anyway, th this kind of gives you an idea of where these trail segments are. Also on here is the next part, which is Audubon Dakota sites. As we've vacated a lot of river property, um, the mowing has gotten horrendous, and some of it doesn't lend itself to mowing. So we've partnered with Audubon Dakota, and I'm gonna let Mike talk, add to all of this now where we're putting in um, prairie restoration and not mowing all of it. And that's been a great partnership. Mike, maybe you want to describe the Audubon program a little bit more. That's your third memo in the packet. Yeah, the Audubon, the, this last year we put in five new sites, was, was uh, Old Homestead Park, um, Riverfront Park, Horn Park, North River Grasslands, and uh, Homestead Prairie. And these are five that we just did this year. And uh, there's, in 2000, in previous years, I've done more, and they keep improving on these sites, keep reseeding them if they need more, you know, what they're looking at. Um, and then this helps us out a lot, too, for mowing, because we have a, a lot of mowing that we do in these areas. And by them putting these in it, it we, it's a, it goes it's like natural six to eight right? inches higher, so you're not mowing at a low, so you let them go natural. And then they, they come in and mow them like once or twice a summer. Take care of thistle. Yeah, and spraying. Buckthorn. Yeah. So, and they manage them for three years? They manage years? three years, yep. And then the, so we will take over after that. But as yeah. the first three years, they take care of all the stuff. And, and then yeah. even once you take care of it, after the three years, it's much less maintenance. Yes, yes. That's the theory. Yeah, the we haven't gotten is, to that three years yet. It, we're looking at probably you, you mow these areas twice a year instead of, you know, once every two weeks, like you do with grass. So this is really an important part of our river corridor plan, that if you look on the city's website, the river corridor plan has not only recreational things marked out, but it has all of these native planting areas. Um, 
and the bike paths and different things are all on if you look under the planning part of the city website it's always what are we doing this year and the next memo is river keepers and some of you may not know what whips are because I've already had that question uh, we it's called reforestation and what that means is that as trees come down we plant more trees river keepers does a nice job of getting volunteers and I think they're planning to plant 600 whips. A whip is a small tree. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know what a, what a whip is, and I shouldn't have, I should have given more explanation on that. But um, and then they put some sticks around them, I believe, to yep. protect them. But it really is a reforestation effort. I have a question about the spraying um, and the. <clears throat> And the planting of the the uh, native seed, um, native flowers, and et cetera. So, if you spray, do you then also kill the native plants that you've just planted, or what's nope, the nope. purpose of spraying? Just be spraying for like the invasive weeds, <clears throat> like we do on, on on just regular grass itself. You know, thistle, you know, dandelion, you know, whatever it is, the 240 will take care of it. So, does it also kill? Is it non-specific or is it specific? No, it's, it just kills what. Yeah, we, it won't be killing the the stuff that's been planted. Okay. If we um we found that even like at the meadows on the golf course, mm -hmm. if we don't spray the thistle and the buckthorn, which are called invasive weeds, it will take over. It will take over. Yeah. The buckthorn. Yeah, I know. We have buckthorn eradication plans. It's a huge problem. It'll take over everything. Okay, how about goats? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have a tend, tell me to attend the goats. <laughs> it's a serious question. I know it is. <laughs> We've talked about that uh, when we did this project. You did? Yeah. Well, just that that's a use, but you got to tend the goats. Well, you have like Minneapolis uh, or St. Paul, they have people that own goats and then they yeah. rent them out to the, the, to the parks. Yeah, to kill the bu the buckthorn especially. Yeah, or eat the buckthorn. Yeah, I it's a legitimate question. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a I didn't. I, yeah. I just. At this point, you have to hire people from outside the city limits. Yeah, so. definitely. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, goats are the new chickens. <laughs> so, any questions on any of that stuff? You know, we planned to do a uh, bridge celebration party when the bridge was done, but uh, Mike, maybe did you operate the bridge? Yes, the the bridge was supposed to be completed. I think it was September 1st, I believe. Yes, we're going to have a grand opening. Yeah. And, and I think it was January 7th when it finally opened. <laughs> anyway, the uh, we were supposed to have a test of the lift here uh, the 21st of February, but that was held back now too, so. That's coming up in the next couple of weeks, I'm hoping. Cause Let's hold the bridge back is some electrical. Yeah. And this bridge, for those of you who aren't aware, during floods allows you to mechanically lift it and put it down instead of getting a crane down there each time. Which we might need here soon. Yep, because if this all melts at the same time and this isn't operational yet, it's operational in that you can use it, but yes, it's, they don't yeah, know it's that just, it goes yeah. up. They're just waiting to uh, <laughs> test the lift to get it the standards what they which they need. So there's some kind of mechanical problem there. They're they're trying to figure out. Uh, Dr. Zimmerman, engineer, did, he presented a oh. flood projection for the okay. Bridge. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, the, what I read in the paper, it said 31. And, you know, 31, we've been through some tough ones. That isn't so bad, you know. But it all depends on those models and how the melt comes. March sun gets hotter than February sun and <laughs> hotter than January sun. Yep. One of the big advantages of this bridge, right, is that if it does flood and we need to raise it, you're able to lower it quicker, and basically the downtime is shorter than. Yes, exactly. Before they had to bring cranes in and lift it up, and yeah. 
And if the ground was saturated, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So it should be a, a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is a duplicate bridge. And uh, for those of you, uh, last time, this is the same concept, but they were supposed to engineer the problems out of the Gooseberry Bridge, the Gooseberry Lindenwood Bridge. Also, as a mechanical lift bridge like this, it had some problems. I don't remember what they were, so they were going to engineer those out of it. So that can go up and down, and that bridge we reused out at MB Johnson Park to go over Snaky Creek. So it was reused. This bridge is reused by Fargo because it's a joint project. So we got the first one, they got the second one on a reuse plan. So part, of, and we reused it at Snaky Creek um, with part of our legacy grant funds from the DNR. And it opened up 12 additional acres of natural land out there. So. Uh, did you want to talk about the grandstand? Oh, I did. I was going to bring something on that. The Matson Grandstand project, the, for those of you who are new again, the projects for parks that are our bigger projects that we're working on is a few years ago in, well, in 2008, like 10 years ago, I guess now, um, there was a, an effort, a uh, community effort to replace the grandstand at Matson and make field improvements. Um, city had first money in, and then what happened in 2008 is a lot of people's money didn't, it didn't go very well. It wasn't a great time to raise money for a big project. And the project was $1.5 million. Since that time, we downsized the grandstand project to a $600,000 project that has now risen to $680,000. But now we're also wondering if um, that may be too large also. Um, and um, because there's a lot of talk about um, with the new high school, will they, who will play? Um, the grandstand at Matson, in order to bring in large tournaments, um, needs about a 350 to 500 person seating capacity. Um, the grandstand that's being proposed is much larger than that. So we could go smaller and not affect our ability to bring in tournaments into Matson. Um, the Centennial softball or a baseball complex where the youth play out at Centennial is in need of repairs also. So we're talking about looking at the design again and incorporating a baseball approach of what does ba these complexes need instead of just getting the one grandstand kind of look at a more comprehensive approach to that. Um, I'm um, advocating that that's where we spend our tour out there, get some plan together, talk about it, and then when we tour in June, maybe we go look at these two sites to, to see you know, what we think. Or is there a donor out there that just wants to give a $680,000 grandstand with a new sign? Maybe, maybe not. Um, so you know, we've got the one design. It's not going to go away. Um, and maybe there's just an alternative to, as we get into it, we see how the fundraising goes. Um, but it includes um, improvements at both locations. So we have an active committee right now. Again, this may be an opportunity where, um, you know, maybe some park board members have some interest. Maybe there's, you know, uh, some interest to be serving on those committees from this group. I don't, I don't know. So. Which, in my opinion, I strongly feel that if you're on this board, and there are opportunities to get involved in committees like that. I would, I think that's an excellent way for us to be even more involved than just meeting quarterly. Yeah. Uh, so as these opportunities come up, we'll definitely shoot them out, and hopefully, uh, people will be willing to raise their hands and and uh, and maybe even be able to report back to this board on you know if you attended a committee meeting, kind of what's going on. I think that would be a really great way for. Um, to just be more engaged as a as a board. The the items right now that are being looked at the six items kind of citywide is a um, aquatics, um, aqu uh, the 1968 pool at Romke, 1958. 
Uh, the pool was a 1958 version at Rocky. Uh, so aquatics, and there's a group kind of meeting to talk about, you know, kind of a community center, aquatic center. Um, you know, is that something, the Matson group, um, they're talking about lights at Southside Regional Park. In order to make any improvements, I really highly recommend that we engage that community and remaster plan um, that location to have an updated conversation. Um, when we first master planned that area, it was a field. There, you know, there was very few homes along there. So um, that work needs to be done. And then um, youth scholarships is on the foundation committee. Um, but the lights at Southside Regional Park, uh, when football plays there and they have a couple thousand kids playing fall football, um, you know, they can't, they can't extend the season at all. So that grass sits empty a lot in the fall, just because, and in the spring, um, where if we had some lights out there, it would be good. And um, FM Athletics Football wants to be a partner in raising funding for those lights. So that's a very doable project also. And I think, did I reach the five? Or a performing arts center is another big topic that isn't in the park board's purview, but certainly is something to, you know, that was on the top six, what right? What about our adaptive playground? Yes, that's the other one. Thank you, Heidi. Um, inclusive playground. Um, right now, the Rotary is looking to do a natural nature playground. Um, the combined clubs are looking for a location and unfortunately we met with them recently um, I tried to see if they would be interested in doing um, the combined rotary clubs built us the miracle field so a inclusive playground seemed like the next best step we haven't picked a location it could be to replace the one at gooseberry or it could be next to the miracle field or it could be a new site all on its own those questions are not answered yet um, but they're in a fun raising campaign for a nature playground which is um, they want to raise about six hundred and sixty thousand dollars and have voted on it and it is about natural play but they want a downtown location um, we're having trouble finding a location that works for them along the river mature trees to use the trees to climb and so forth that is flood isn't floodable because a lot of the stuff isn't floodable so they're in the beginning stages of um, discussion on where something like this may be located. Um, James, you're in the Rotary Club. You're familiar with the project they're looking to do? Somewhat, I'm not on that. Uh, I'm the oh. five club beneficiary. Okay. But so Mike and I just met with them last week. Would that be a synopsis? This would be a five club. Of yes, it would. And, yeah. and the, the site locations they need are building and most of them they want connected to Fargo and yep, they want a most of those areas are flood pro prone to begin with and so they want a downtown location close to Fargo and a year-round NRC mm -hmm. and pretty much and our stuff parking. floods and ample parking because they want to make it a destination because they want to do grants but they figure their fundraising is I think they've looked at other ones they say that there's one at um, Detroit Mountain that the DNR helped them fund with a legacy grant. Crookston has one. Okay, yep. So there's place, I mean, I can see it in the urban where my research shows me it's like in the middle of the cities, you know, but they have topography. You know, they need natural hills and so forth. And we have some of that at MB, but it certainly isn't on the bus route and it certainly isn't on, uh, you know, we're just having a problem with the location. They haven't chosen Fargo or Moorhead yet for the location. Um, we asked them at this point, Fargo didn't have a great location either because of flooding where our trees are. So both Heidi and I have served on the University of Minnesota Northwest Regional Sustainable Development Foundation. Well, that is. <laughs> Partnership and WRDSP. And okay. so um, they, uh, one thing that, well, we worked on when I was on the board and you were on the board too was the natural play spaces and there are yeah. some really nice designs already probably yeah. done or um, yeah. that can be retrofitted and I know the, that they would share it. Yeah. That. You know, the designs, I think that um, they are moving forward looking at different design 
I think they're finding that the designs lend itself to needing some topography, needing some mature trees. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. and so where do we find that and where we're at? You know, we talked about blue stem, we talked about gooseberry, um, but it has to be floodable. Not, um, not floodable. Um, right. Or the, it, the, stru to, it, yeah, the structures have, to, have be to be able to be flooded. Stand, yeah. yeah, to withstand. That area downtown by those old tennis courts with what I can't remember what that building is. Well, we call that the um, Aztecs building. And just so you know, that has, um, if you can believe this, that used to be the old dump. Yeah. And so the building moves like this, and so did the tennis wow. courts. And so we talk about maybe leaving the fence. It's a very tall fence, but you know, as a <laughs> secondary dog park or whatever. But the, um, you know, that building is going to come down if you went up there. Um, it causes security concerns for some of our population that um, want to be there. But that building at this point is probably not state. You can't really build on it. And the other thing in the plan at this point they're looking is they really want a year-round um, building. So, And we can't, by rules, build on the floodplain. Okay, and I didn't realize that there's actually a building, like a structure as part of that natural playground. Yeah. They, Part one of the criteria is they want, uh, so it's year round, they want an indoor uh, and a restroom play space. They want it to be a destination. They looked at the power plant land? Um, yeah, we talked about that briefly as far as that being part of something else, you know. I know, I know a lot of developers have their eye on it. But. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, and, and our point was is that maybe that works with that development. Right. You know, they're looking, they only were looking at two acres, but it's still two acres natural trees, topography. Um, at this point, um, those were all, being on a bus route, ample parking, all that was really, and so we really struggled. I went to the city planner and she's like, uh, <laughs> gave it, I mean, since we talked and she just told me today, I just got, it's just a tough, tough list right now for us. Um, what about taking a park that's already existing, like Alm Park, and making that a natural place space? Mm -hmm. um, you know, that that's a good idea. That could be something that we ask them. They want it as a destination with lots of traffic coming in. And oh. if you've ever been to Alm Park... Oh, um, it's quiet. And it's quiet, and there small. isn't... And it's small. small. You know, they want to make it like Madison Place, like an inclusive playground where the region comes. Hmm. They're seeing it as a destination is what was presented to us, right? Yes. Have they, I, you know, who, who's a part of the science group, science museum group? Jesse Rock. Have, yeah. Is there, could there be a connection between those two groups? Maybe, I mean, um, you know, anything's possible at this point. It, I mean, if they want a destination. Right. That in, that's tied, I mean, that's tied to nature. Right, I know. Science. Uh, one of my concerns is, is that, um, you know, this would put the inclusive playground in a, di you know, I mean, we're trying to do two things now, too. Okay, so the inclusive playground is going to be a part of the nature? No. I mean, they said it could be used. They showed some, that they would be receptive to some inclusive, but... Um, but not to the scope no. that we want. No. So, I mean, now we're, that would add a project, you know, into our list. So it needs to be vetted, you know, quite. But, you know, I mean, a master plan is meant to be, you know, a living plan. You react to what folks um, would like to do. So, but in our master plan, like Heidi had mentioned, an inclusive playground was one of the things that, as kind of a destination, uh, we looked at Southside Regional, we looked at Gooseberry, you know, adding some parking lots and, I mean, really you need some pretty hefty parking for a big inclusive playground uh, in space. So. All right. uh, F through I, I don't know that we really need to go through unless there are any specific questions or thoughts with any of those items that were included in the packet? Especially given we're running a little... Yeah, sorry. Uh, I think no, it's my it's fault. A lot of good information <laughs> and, and good discussion and so great exposure for the new board members and so it's a good meeting. But uh, 
So one of my questions is, is, is anybody have a desire to be on any of the, we have two active committees right now, Matt's, and we haven't started the active committee for inclusive yet. Um, uh, we've got Matt's and then we're gonna have a dog park, r real active one. And we gotta get to the others too, but um, if anybody wants to, you sure can email or talk. Thanks to Matt's, and are we looking to do that because we're losing tournaments because we don't have the facility for that? You know, we have just a very small, um, how many row bleachers set out there? Yeah, I'm not sure, but yeah, it's small. It it's, yeah. doesn't hold yeah. what we need. So people have to bring their own chairs. And so it, it, and we don't have enough to hold some of our major tournaments. That would be the answer. So the field is very nice. It's all been renovated and updated and the, the um, dugouts are very nice, but the seating was always meant to have a new um, press box. And the school at one point even wanted to put kind of a, a dressing area. I don't want to say clubhouse, but locker room. Locker room. Locker room. <laughs> That's a better word. <laughs> so did you have to address your parking then too? I think we're set with that. And we did some work last year on accessibility, putting in some additional concrete to get wheelchairs up and in um, I would imagine this group would be responsible for collaborating with the high school and seeing yes the high school's on the committee so right now who's on the committee is youth baseball Concordia baseball representative um, high school co coach American Legion teams so really the users I think the ask for members of this board would just be to attend and be a voice for the parks board. You're not chairing it, yeah, uh, re and really a voice and an ear, so you can come back and you know as we talk about these projects, just to have some of that board involvement. I think yeah. would be beneficial. So, and maybe Holly, we send out an email after the meeting with some of the, what those opportunities are and okay. give people a chance to mull it over. And yep. I don't think, it, they don't need to be voted on or anything like that, right? No. So if people express interest, we can yep. just say, okay, here's the times. And okay, that they could be on the committee. The um, last thing I was gonna mention is because there's work being done on Center Avenue this year, our farmer's market that has finally taken off is gonna have to find a new location for one year because um, they're just right at the center avenue is going to be um, have major construction on it so yeah we just got snap to come for those of you who um, you know we did a lot of work on Kim did a lot of work on we had a band out there we had food trucks out there so that she really built that um, and we would do that it's just a matter of where we're going to move it to we talk about woodlawn talk about somewhere close to downtown so it has more visibility the visibility right where it was at really drew people as they were going home from work they'd see it and pull in so I don't know what we're gonna do yet we haven't decided looking for a new location where is it currently at pardon where was it currently at um, right in the center mall parking lot up from Vicks and Herbergers that whole back row that was right bordering Center Avenue there by the sign, the center mall sign at that corner of the Center Avenue Bridge. And okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Entertain a motion. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, May. They're they're the last Tuesday, fourth Tuesday in the last Tuesday in May or. Yeah. The other thing, um, we'll be looking for days in that um, of does the, la the last week in June may not work for us because we have Scandinavian Festival. So I don't know if um, our little bus tour will work that time, but it, we'll try to stick to a Tuesday and we'll try to stick to four o'clock, but may not be that fourth Tuesday in June. It might be the first one. We'll let you know kind of do some work on that and okay anything else you get okay motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn second that seconded any discussion none all those in favor signify by saying
Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, thank you, everybody.